Open it up for uh, straight questions. Uh, front row right, uh, Tim May, Letterman Row. Brian, is this what you had in mind? Is this what you envisioned about this offense the last couple of weeks of hitting on almost every cylinder, at least in the first half? <laughs> but I mean, just what, what is your thought coming out of this game uh, about the way this offense is executing, CJ Stroud especially? Well, you can see our capability and when we're playing um, you know, really good football, clean football, then we certainly have um, a high ceiling. And uh, you know, we're still striving towards, towards greatness and it's bringing it every week and playing really well every week. Uh, we certainly have a, a, you know, a tough opponent coming up this week and certainly all of our focus is quickly going to that game. But I know we're fresh out of this game. Uh, proud of the way our guys played. I thought we played strong up front. Protection was good. I thought receivers, you know, really crisp in their route running, made more plays. Uh, Travion ran well, and I, I thought CJ was strong. Uh, over here to the right, Jared Smalley, WCMH. About uh, Stroud, complete 17 in a row. I, I know you don't know a lick about the Heisman race in particular, but with him displaying that kind of talent on a national stage, you understood what the, the, the forum was like today. What do you think that does for him in that national regard, and just his performance, his development, to get to the level he got through today? Yeah, I mean, um, I think his preparation has allowed him the opportunity to be in these situations. But I think when you're looking at the way he's playing, not that uh, you know this really matters to our team or not, but uh, you know when you only play really one half of football and then you throw for six touchdowns, uh, I just think that that matters when you're looking at statistics. And the level of play that he's playing at right now is, is uh, you know very high. I think that needs to be taken into consideration. But. You know, our focus is on, uh, on the team up north right now and getting ready for those guys and figuring out a way to get this team, you know, ready to go play the next Saturday up there. Right next door, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. You had a couple weeks there where the offense wasn't blowing up quite the way it is now. What ways do you see when this offense is cooking like this? Is it putting pressure on the other team's offense and, I guess, helping your defense by extending? Well, I think when, when you stay on schedule like we've done, stay away from penalties that have got a soft schedule, uh, and then finished off drives. I thought the throw that, that uh, CJ had, um, you know, early on on the uh, in the red zone was a really nice throw to Chris. You know, that was a tight window that he made that throw in. But that's that's playing against good good teams and making those sort of throws down there in the red zone. And um, you know, there was times where um, I just thought he moved his feet well. He saw it, and and I thought the runs were efficient. You know, for the most part, when we were hitting our runs, I mean, they were they were good. There was one point we um, we took a sack. And it was second, and I think like. 13 or 14, then we ran for like a game of 17, got a first down. I mean, those are the things, you know, when you get back on schedule like that, that keeps us going because I feel like when we get a new set of downs, you know, we're dangerous. And, and certainly when you get the ball out in space to our, our guys, uh, another set of downs means, you know, you may hit a home run. And the more we can keep the chains moving, the better off our chances are. Over to the left, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Brian, football is such a difficult game to play flawlessly, 22 players at a time. All, just, were you able to take any time today and just go, wow, this is this is remarkable to have for a team to play as well as it's on both sides of the ball. No, um, I, I hear what you're saying. I just feel like there's just there's so much more here. We're, we're, we're right in the middle of it right now. And, uh, you know, to, to take a step back and, and start to do all that stuff, you're going to lose focus on what's going on right now. We've got a huge game. We've got everything right on this thing coming up right around the corner. And uh, I got to tell you, it wasn't even, uh, you know, the game wasn't over yet. I was already thinking about it. You know, it just, there's just so much going on here. We knew this run was going to be real. Uh, I'm very proud of the way our team played today, but uh, all the focus goes to uh, the Wolverines. Uh, behind him, Bill Landis at The Athletic. Ryan, I think sometimes people might watch your offense and just say, well, these, these guys are open all the time. CJ's just throwing to open receivers. But it does seem like oftentimes, and today, CJ does a really good job of holding defenders, looking guys off, holding safeties. Like, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, stuff be yeah I think his anticipation is, is off the charts. I think he sees things really, really well. I think his touch is excellent. Uh, when he needs to you know, put a little extra on it, he does. He's accurate downfield. Uh, he doesn't make the guys work for the ball. You know, he plays catch, and uh, so the receivers are excellent, and, and they create a lot of separation and make a lot of plays. Uh, but 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 CJ special too. Um, front row left, Dan Hope, Eleven Warriors. Uh, Ryan, I mean with, with CJ, I mean first few games he's battling a shoulder injury. There's fans questioning whether he should even be the starting quarterback. Now people are talking about him as a Heisman front runner. What do you think are the things? that CJ's done to just grow so much in one year? Well, I think first off, I've told them all along that uh, you know, praise and criticism are all the same. You have to treat it the same way. So the same people that thought maybe he should have been playing are the same people that are telling him maybe you know, he should be the Heisman Trophy winner. You can't listen to either of those people. Uh, has to stay focused on just having a great, 
uh, night to night, getting home, getting rest, waking up in the morning, getting started on these guys. Learn from uh, what happened in this game and stay focused. And uh, I hope he can he can do that because so far he's done that. He's done really, he's been really steady, even though uh, you know there's been a lot of ups and downs. And right now we're on an upswing. So being able to handle that is critically important, almost more important when things go bad. And so, uh, but but I think it's just putting one week in front of the other, preparation-wise, learning from it, staying strong, and not riding that roller coaster. There's a lot of to be in the situation. Third row left, Rob Aller, the dispatch. Three receivers, each with 100 yards. Uh, can you describe the different skill set of these guys? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Chris, as you can see, he's he's such a weapon downfield. He did a nice job on a couple other things today, on bubble screens and things like that. His stuff is running up around for the catch has been really good. Uh, just fast, zero to ten, just off the charts. Garrett is, is just so strong and just so sudden. His catch radius is uh, extraordinary. Um, you know, and, and he just he sees the field. And, and then Jackson is just is so quick in, inside. His spatial awareness, his ability to set guys up and change direction. He's kind of built low to the ground with really strong hips and a lower body. Um, and he's got tremendous ball skills as well. He knows how to run routes. I also was, was impressed with the way Julian Fleming today played. Stepped up in a big way. I thought uh, that you know he came down and blocked the guy, and then he came down and ran the pop pass right behind him. That was great to see him uh, start to be you know, you know a contributor here to this offense because he he's been in and out of injuries, and so um, you know he's a guy that also is a strong guy, big strides, can go up and, and, and play uh, play the ball up high. So uh, like you said, different skill sets there. Got time for just a few more uh, so we can get some players up here. Uh, uh, far left, Doug Lamarise, Cleveland.com. Ryan, you said you started thinking about the Michigan game even while this game was going on. To play a top 10 team this week, and now you have the rivalry right. game coming up, a, a team you didn't get to play last year. Yeah. What's that transition like? What's this two week period like for what you guys have to be focused on? Well, we, we at, at the bye week, we talked about a six week season. Um, and we knew that the week in and week out, this was going to be hard. And I got a lot of respect for the teams that we played so far this year. You know, when, when you look at the way Penn State played us and the way Nebraska played us and, and uh, you know, Purdue, you know, Michigan State, these are all really good conference teams. And so we knew we had to bring it, you know, every week. And when you look at college football this year, certainly we, we understood it even more. There was evidence. And, and now here's another, here's another one right here. Obviously everything gets ramped up this week because of what it is. And, and what's on the line uh, all the time, but but even more this year. You know, certainly the opportunity to go to Indy and, and everything's on the on the line. So, uh, you know, we knew it was going to be like this. You have to bring it every week, and uh, it's it's you know uh, the battle of uh, the fittest. I mean, you you got to be strong. You got to bring it every week, and um, you, know, you can't ride the roller coaster. Third row left, Lori Schmidt, Columbus Dispatch. Coach, you had said last week that the offense had to carry the mountain. Discussed today how the defense responded and just how you contained Kenneth Walker. Yeah, I, I thought um, the D line. I thought the guys up front with the, with the linebackers. Uh, you know, look at the film. Look like Tommy was was really all over the place today. I think they took it as a challenge to stop the run. You know, we we're gonna have another challenge coming up this week, but certainly had a lot of respect for Walker coming into the game and, and wanted to do a good job stopping the run and, and make a play. Um, you know, really one dimensional, and I thought we did that. Front row, middle, Clay Hall, WSYX. After a game like this, you'll hear a fan say, oh, I wish we could bottle this effort or save a touchdown. How similar do you think next week's challenge is to what you put on the field today? You know, I, well, we've watched them a little bit here and there, but you can't, you can't get too far ahead of yourself in the season because if, if you start doing that, you're going to lose the game at hand. Um, so I, I've watched them a little bit. They're, they're a very, very good team. And uh, watch them just when you're you know, getting ready to play your game at night. Maybe they have a new game. and. and so I got to watch the film to get an idea, but I know that they're very strong. They have some really good players on defense, um, you know, really good players on offense, and they're playing at a high level. So um, I don't know to answer that question what that's what the comparison is, but uh, certainly when you when you play in the rivalry game, all the records go out the window anyhow. So you know you got you got to play really well. And now we're on the road, so um, you know, a lot going into this week. And final question for Coach Day over here to the right, Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Ryan, it looks like Denzel Burke may be able to come back in if you need him. I, I don't know. That was just a sense. I'm sure you didn't expect you to have the opportunity to manage reps in that second half, but just the advantage of that, if anybody can be close going into what's next. Yeah, um, yeah full disclosure, you know, at, at one point, you know, we wanted to, to get guys some rest in the second half. We just thought it was the right thing to do. We were up seven touchdowns and, and felt like it was it was smart to do it going into next week. You know, we wanted to keep playing. The guys wanted to keep playing. I had to talk some guys, um, you know, uh, off the ledge a little bit because uh, they were they were upset about not getting back in the game. but. Uh, it was the right thing to do, and if it was even, uh, you know, thought at all, then we, then we took one of the game. Ryan, is the mega a long-term absence? 
Uh, it's not long term now. 